Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to teach you Chapter 7, Lesson 5, which is about factoring x squared plus bx plus c. Please have your journals open to page 227. So as you remember from the last section, if I gave you a problem like this, you would be and I asked you to fact to multiply it out, you could either use the distributive property where you multiply c times c and get c squared, and then you would get c times 1, which is 1c, and then 7 times c, 7c, 7 times 1, which is 7, and then you combine the middle term, so you have c squared plus 8c plus 7. Right. So what we're doing for this lesson is we are given this right here and we're, we're going to work our way backwards to find out what the what the factored form is. So you are going to be given the non factored form and you will need to find the factored form. So we're working backwards from what we learned uh, in the last section. Something else that I want to let you know about is that I teach this very, very differently than other teachers and very differently than how the book teaches. I found this method of factoring uh, earlier in my career, and I found that it was much, much easier for students. So if you're able to do today's lesson, then you will not have any trouble with the next lesson as well, which is 7.6. And the 7.6 is the harder of the two. So if you're able to do it this way, then you should be fine with the next lesson as well. So here's how I like to teach this uh, factoring. You're going to take a look at, we're going to start with number one. I'm going to put a line underneath it. And my goal is to find something that multiplies to c squared. Well, the only option here would be c multiplied by c. Now I want to look at my last term, which is 7. And I need to think of some multiples to 7. Well, 1 times 7 works. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply across. So c multiplied by 7 is 7c, and c multiplied by 1 is 1c. Now what my goal is is to see if these two middle terms add together to give me that middle term there, which is your 8c. And they do. 1c plus 7c does indeed equal 8c. OK, so now then I know that that works. So this is going to be my answer, c and then the 1 and then c and the 7. And so here's what I mean by that. It's going to be c plus 1 and c plus 7. And that's my answer. Now I can always double check this by using the distributive property or the table method to make sure that it does work. c times c does equal c squared c times 7 is 7c, and then this is 1c. So 7 plus 1 is 8, and that's what gives us the middle. And now we have 1 times 7, which is 7. And so it does end up working. All right, let's take a look at number 3. So on number 3, I'm going to draw my line underneath. My first goal is to find what are the multiples of x. So we have x and x. Now I need to think of some multiples of 18. So I know that 6 times 3 equals 18. OK, so let's go ahead and try this and see if it works. x multiplied by 3 is 3x. And this x multiplied by 6 is 6x. Now, do, do these two add up to the middle term? Nope, they don't. This is going to be 9x, which is not 11x. OK, so I'm going to take my eraser here and I'm going to erase those. So I know that 6 and 3 are not the answer. OK, let's go ahead and try another one. Let's try 9 and 2. All right, so now I'm going to multiply straight uh, across again. So x times 2, this is 2x. x times 9 is 9x. Let's see if those match up to the middle. 9 plus 2 does equal 11. Excellent. So now we have our answer, and we always take our answer by looking across from each other. So then that means that my answer is going to be x plus 9 and x plus 2. Once again, I can double check this by multiplying it back through and seeing if it does indeed equal the one in the middle, or equal the one that we started with. OK, let's take a look at number 5. So number 5, we have uh, the first term is s squared. So my only choice for that is s times s. My second term, or my last term, excuse me, is 10. 
So you probably have seen that if it multiplies to 10, we want it to add to 11. So if we did five and two, that would be seven. That's not quite right. But if we did uh, 10 and one, then that does work. So 10 times one, let's try that. Just double check. S times one is one S. S times 10 is 10 S. And then I add those two together and it does indeed equal the 11 S that's in the middle. Once again, my answer is straight across from each other. So that first one's going to be S plus 10. And then the next one, which would be S plus one. And like I said, if this were a test and a quiz, I'd probably just double check that by multiplying it back through. Could you please do number two, four, and six on your own? Okay, go ahead and check your answers. I did want to point something out to you that you could flip-flop these pieces here because remember three times four is the same as four times three. So if you wrote this as d plus two and then d plus four, that is also correct. So you're allowed to switch the two pieces around as long as your um, your pieces like this, you always have a D plus two and you always have a D plus four, okay? All right, let's take a look at number seven. So we're gonna take a look at number seven. We have B times B. Now we need to think of what are two numbers that multiply to negative 54. So you'll notice if it multiplies to a negative 54, that means that one of these numbers has to be negative, all right? So let's just try nine and six. I'm gonna put, um, negative nine and positive six here. I'm just gonna make the nine negative. I'll see if that's correct. So now we're gonna cross product. So B times six is six B and B times negative nine is negative nine B. All right, when I add those two together, I get positive, sorry, I get negative three B, but wait a second, I need it to be a positive three. So that means that I've got to flip my negatives around. So nine, nine should be positive and the six should be negative. So this would be a positive nine B, this would be a negative six B. Now, if I add these two together, I do get positive three B. So I know that it, that would be correct. Okay, so remember to find our answer, we need to go straight across. So we have B plus nine. And then my other part of uh, the factor is B plus, sorry, B minus six. B minus six. Once again, if you wanted to write this instead as B minus six and then B plus nine, that also works. You can flip flop those around. All right, let's take a look at number 12. So in number 12, we have two F squared. So it'd be F times F. And then I'm going to think of some multiples of negative 40. Uh, so I'm gonna do 10 and th uh, four. One of them needs to be negative. So I'm gonna make the negative the 10. Okay, let's multiply across. So F times four is four F and F times negative 10 is negative 10 F. And when I add those two together, I do not get negative three. So that doesn't work. So I'm gonna take my eraser here and then erase that and try another set of problems. So we know that 10 and four didn't work. Okay, so let's try uh, five and eight. So I'm gonna have eight, negative eight and positive five. Remember one of them has to be negative because I have a negative number here. So negative eight times positive five does equal negative 40. Okay, so now let's cross product. So F times five is five F. This is going the other across is negative 8f. And let's see if those add up to negative 3, and they do. Okay, good. So that means that this is one of my answers, which is f minus 8. And this is my other answer, f plus 5. Okay, I would like for you to try a few on your own, please. Go ahead and finish the rest of this page. 8, 9, 10, and 11. Please check your answers and see how you did. If you got anything incorrect, see if you can find your mistakes. For these next set of problems, we need to solve the equation. So what we need to do first is to factor them. So on number 13, we need to find out what are some multiples of g squared. So we get g and g. 
then we need to find some multiples of 40. So I'm going to try 4 and 10. Notice that this is positive, but what's in here is negative. So that means I need something that multiplies to a positive number, but adds to a negative number. What that means is that both of those numbers need to be negative this time. So if I cross product that, we're going to get negative 10g. And cross that, we're going to get negative 4g. Uh-oh, these two do not match what's in the middle. So that means I need to erase what I have here. So this is kind of like a, a, a puzzle. We have to figure out what numbers work. So let's try a different set of numbers. Let's try negative 5 and negative 8. So when we cross product that, we're going to get negative 8g, and then we're going to get negative 5g, and see if those do add up to the middle, and they do. So that means that we have g minus 5 and we have g minus 8. So I'm going to write g minus 5 and g minus 8, and notice that it still equals 0. So if you remember from the la one of our last uh, videos, we needed to figure out what g is. So we take each individual piece and e equal it to 0. So g minus 5 is equal to 0. So that means that g can equal positive 5. Now let's do the other side. We have g minus 8 is equal to 0. So that means g can equal positive 8. So g can either equal positive 5 or positive 8 as answers. If we take a look at number 16, 17, and 18, these are not written in standard form yet. So what we need to do is we need to move over that la the number on the other side of the equation so that it's on the correct side. So on number 17, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And so I'm going to get r squared minus 3r plus 2 is equal to 0. Now I can factor this. So multiples of r squared are r and r. Multiples of 2 are 2 and 1. Once again, I notice that the middle term is negative. So that means both of these numbers need to be negative. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And when we cross product, you'll see that it does equal a negative 3 in the middle. So this is negative 1r, and then cross that one is negative 2r. And they do indeed equal the one in the middle. So that means that my two answers, we go across like so. So we have r minus 2, and the other one is r minus 1. Uh, now we need to equal that to 0, so we're going to take each individual piece and equal it to 0. So r minus 2 is equal to 0, or r minus 1 is equal to 0. And when we solve for r on both of those, we get r is equal to positive 2 or positive 1. If you take a look at number 18, we need to subtract 8 on both sides. Then we will get t squared minus 7t minus 8 is equal to 0. And then you're going to solve it just like what you did on number 17 and number 13. So go ahead and finish number 18. And then while you're at it, do number 14, 15, and 16 on your own. All right, please pause the video and check your answers and see how you did. If you have any mistakes, see if you can find them. Let's take a look at number 19. The area of a right triangle is 16 square miles. One leg of the triangle is four miles longer than the other leg. We want to find the length of each leg. So we're told that it's a right triangle, and they don't have a picture for us. So whenever I don't see a picture, that's the first thing I like to do, is draw myself a picture. So I'm told that the area of this is 16 miles squared, 16 square miles. Then I'm told that one leg of the triangle is four miles longer than the other. So if the short leg is x, then four miles longer would be x plus four. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what the area of a triangle is. So the formula for the area of a triangle equals one half base times height. So that means if we plug in what we know, we know that the area is 16. So I'm going to plug in 16 equals 1 half. 
the base and the height are x plus 4 and x. Okay, now we just need to solve this problem. The first thing that I want to do is get rid of this 1 half. If I multiply this whole entire equation by 2 and this side by 2, then those two will cancel out and I won't have my fraction anymore. So now I have 32 is equal to x plus 4 times x. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this through. So that gives me 32 equals x squared plus 4x. Now I'm almost in standard form. I need to move the 32 to the other side. So this leaves me with 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 32. All right, so now if I could factor this, I could find my answer. So let's see if we can factor this. Uh, two multiples of x squared are x and x, and two multiples of negative 32 are 8 and negative 4. So now let's see if those cross product to what we need. So this is negative 4x here, and then this other one is positive 8x. All right, so 8 and negative 4 do indeed equal positive 4 there. So that means that if we take what's straight across from each other, this is going to be x plus 8. And the other one straight across would be x minus 4. And that's equal to 0. So that means x could equal either negative 8 or positive 4. So let's look back at what the question is. The question is asking us to find lengths. And I got a negative number 8 and a positive number 4. So if I think about this in the real world, this could not be a negative 8. So I'm going to go ahead and say, nope, that can't be the answer. So the only possible solution that I have here is that x could equal 4, which means that this length is 4 plus 4, which is 8. So that means my two lengths are going to be 4 and 8. So 4 and 8 are the two side lengths of that triangle. For this video, we're going to go ahead and not do number 20, but we might be doing that during class time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.